So the eighth film in the X-Men series, X-Men Apocalypse, is hitting theaters next May. It's following up on three pretty great movies, at least in my opinion, and it's bringing back Brian Singer, the director of my personal favorites in the series. So today, I wanted to talk about what I'd like to see in the upcoming X-Men Apocalypse. Let's get to it. This is something that I would have said for Days of Future Past, because it was crowded as hell. So many mutants. But in the end, it really had a majority of them only in there for a few minutes. Which left some fans disappointed, but really worked for the movie in my opinion. But with this movie, there are so many mutants, and a lot of them seem like they're gonna be main players. The last movie really focused on Magneto, Mystique, Charles, and Wolverine, with a few others in there on the side. This one is going to focus on Magneto, Mystique, Charles, Apocalypse, Psylocke, Jean Grey, Storm, Cyclops, and a few others. So really, just do what you did in Days of Future Past, or even First Class. All of these people are there, but not as major players. They can be there to support three or four main characters. Don't divide up the screen time for everyone, or else it'll be a mess. So a while back, either Brian Singer or Simon Kinberg or someone making this movie likened it to a Roland Emmerich film, in that there would be this mass destruction stuff in there. I really don't want to see them do this 2012 San Andreas-esque thing, because that's something I've always liked about the X-Men movies. Every other superhero movie ends with the heroes destroying a city. The X-Men keep it relatively small. Sure, they might lift up a stadium occasionally, but besides that, they'll just fight on the Statue of Liberty. Even when the potential is there for a huge explosion destruction scene, like in First Class with all those missiles, they never do it. Point is, I've seen enough buildings falling down thanks to superheroes to last me a life lifetime. Looking through the X-Men films, the only villain we've really gotten a lot of insight into, as far as motivations and past and all that, is Magneto. Besides that, you have Stryker, Kevin Bacon, and the Silver Samurai, all serviceable villains, but ones that we don't really know that much about. I'm not saying we need a half-hour segment about Apocalypse growing up in ancient times, and a ten-minute explanation of his powers and motives. I'm just saying superhero films nowadays, with the exception of the Batman movies, focus a lot more on the heroes and have the villains be a bit more generic. I'm not saying these movies are bad, but they would be a lot better if the villain was more three-dimensional. And Apocalypse is a villain that you can do a lot with. He's the first mutant, he has all these insane powers and this crazy backstory and all that, just explore it a bit. The standout scene in Days of Future Past is obviously Quicksilver's moment. It was unexpected, it was funny, it looked great, it was incredible. So for this, I say we should have maybe one or two scenes with Quicksilver doing his Quicksilver thing, but let's have something new. If it's him taking out bad guys again, then it's just gonna feel like a rehash. Maybe you could have him saving people, or building something super fast, or I don't know. Even with the non-super speed scenes, having more Quicksilver would just be cool. Fleshing out his character a bit would make him more than just this sort of gimmicky, hey, super fast guy. Now I have a final point here, which isn't really a wish, more just a question, or statement, or something, and that's... Now, I've looked through a couple websites, and no one seems to be sure if Hugh Jackman is going to be in this movie. I have no doubt he'll be in it in at least a small cameo. But will he have a major role? I want to see what happened after Days of Future Past. Mega spoiler alert for that film. But at the end, when the entire timeline is erased, and he wakes up back in the future, but we also see him waking up in 1973. So he's still in the past, right? At least that's how I understand it. So did the Weapon X program happen? He got taken away by Mystique, so he must have some kind of connection. Now, would I like to see him? Sure, in a smaller part. He's sort of been the focal point for almost all these films. But now I think he should be there, but maybe just resting in the background and then coming in for an epic battle. If he isn't there at all, that's totally fine. But if he is there, even better, I say. As long as he doesn't steal focus. So let me know in the comments, has he been confirmed or not? Because every source I've found is just Hugh Jackman saying, I'm talking to the guys in charge, and they think it could be good, and I think it could be good, but we're not sure. And the movie's wrapped now, so I just don't know. So that's what I want to see in X-Men Apocalypse. What do you want to see? Let me know down below in the comments. Be sure to like this video, check out my Instagram at bhl underscore Hudson, and, and subscribe for more videos like the one you just watched. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.